All right, are we good to start? Um, all right then. <laughs> okay, well, hello everyone and welcome to my talk on, well, how to crash a graphic stack pretty easily. Um, it's actually really easy, but that's not really the point of the talk. The point of the talk today is to talk about how to do rendering at extreme render distances and um, ray tracing, pretty much. So, so what are the current problems with rendering? Um, well, the issue is um, uh, basically. We, we want far render distance. We want as much render distance as possible. Uh, that is why mods like Distance Horizons um, and Far Planes 2, Farscraft 2, all of these other mods exist, really. So we want really far render distance, pretty much. Um, we've also got Reflex, which can, especially the 3D resource packs, can absolutely explode Vertex um, count uh, into the hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions. So at 32 render distance, your um, game will consume more than 12 gigs of VRAM. Unfortunately, these are actual things that do exist, um, and they are not very fun to deal with. So what are the past solutions? We've got all the different mods that have in some way optimized the game for the game's rendering in some way or another. We've got, you know, your standard Sodium, Canvas, Vulcan mod, Optifine, Fastcraft 2, and then the other two are Far Plains 2 and Distance Horizons, which both do um, rendering with LODs which is a very, very critical part of the talk uh, that will come on later. So this is what, as you can probably, uh, this is what, you know, sodium looks like. I'm pretty sure most people, actually everyone at the con is using sodiums. Um, sodium 0.4.10 off the top of my head. Um, and so, yeah, it just, it's vanilla Minecraft. Uh, same with Optifine, Vulcan mod, Canvas, all of these other mods. You know, they are just your stock standard mods that increase your render uh, increase your performance and optimizations. So, what does Far Plains Two look like? This is Far Plains mm -hmm. Two with very short settings. So. Um, where the LODs are very close together as a visualization so that we can clearly see. So uh, as you can see uh, at the start in the center, um, it is very high detail. And then as you get f further and further, it gets to uh, lower and lower details. That's LOD, which is level of detail. So the this is Far Plains 2, which is 1.12.2 only. However, there is a new work. Um, there is new work being done on a 1.16 version, I believe. I'm not entirely sure um, on the status of the Far Plains 2 mod, to be perfectly honest. Um, however, the next main thing that I'm willing to bet a lot of people know is, is Distance Horizons which is a very popular LOD mod that adds, well, level of details. Uh, this is, um, I believe, a 512 render distance. Um, and as you can see over here, um, the, well, it's LODs. So any stuff that's really far away gets um, into, gets put into small quads. And well, that's pretty much it. Um, 
So, how do we solve render distance? There are a bunch of issues with um, solving render distance. Firstly is CPU processing power. Um, CPU-driven solutions are very suboptimal because they do not scale with the hardware, specifically GPU hardware. Um, so that means that if you have like an Intel Core Duo or something running alongside an RTX 4090, as an example, um, you are going to be CPU bound probably because you are not um, you are not exploiting your GPU to the full capabilities. The next major problem with render distance is that without LODs, it is n squared complexity, meaning that as your um, render distance increases, so does your the amount of geometry that you need to render, and well, it doesn't do it in a very nice way to computer memory or computational resources. N squared is very bad uh, in algorithms. You probably don't want N squared, especially if you're wanting to render, you know, an entire Minecraft world. The existing solutions for CPU driven, well, so the way that Sodium, Optifine, Vulkan, all of that works is very hard to multi-thread with the given way um, with the current implementations. In the only implementation that is not is Bedrock Edition. That has uses a multi-threaded BFS search. Uh, so that is why they can say they will not say they can render at 96 render distance and be just fine. I say just fine running at 30 FPS at like potato GPU usage. So what what have I done to solve this? Well, I have made a mod. I don't know how many people know this. I've made a mod called NVIDIA, which, well, is an NVIDIA-only rendering mod. Um, <laughs> it, it does, well, GPU-driven dr rendering. It's got a two-pass rendering solution uh, calling pipeline, um, very similar to Nanite, which we will talk about in a bit. Um, it is... You, it uses mesh shaders, a, and um, yeah, it is a two-pass culling, meaning that it calls the sections, then the regions. Uh, it calls the regions, then the sections, and not yet the um, meshlets. So it uses a something called um, mesh shaders, which is a semi-new. Um, which is a semi-new uh, feature for a lot of GPUs that is basically a compute shader attached directly to a vertex shader. Um, and what that means is that we can start doing very silly stuff. So, um, yeah, this is what NVIDIA looks like. Uh, rendering a, a uh, 14 gigabytes of terrain data using half a terabyte per second of memory bandwidth um, on the GPU. I do not know how many, how much geometry that is, but uh, yeah, half a terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. It's a lot. It, it, it renders a lot of geometry. This was running at 60 FPS, 60 to 80 FPS. Uh, I couldn't fit any more um, terrain in like GPU. Uh, it was memory bound. Um, I like I, you, uh, <laughs> without adding or doing better vertex compression. Um, yeah, you are limited by the amount of memory that your GPU has to render the Minecraft world. Um, yeah, so half a terabyte of memory bandwidth on the GPU chip itself. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. per second, it's using half a terabyte of. Uh, bandwidth. Uh, as I said, I haven't been able to run into a computational limit with this. It's all below to reach below 60 FPS. It has always been just VRAM, always VRAM bound. However, this is not enough, not even close. So we want to solve render distance. That is um, ha ha having it you know, render far like 128 chunks is good, but um, yeah, 
it's not good enough. We, we the, the the aim of the talk was infinite render distance. Um, that is not infinite. <laughs> so, no LOD means O and squared scaling. We need LODs. LODs have issues. Um, you saw with the distance horizon screenshot, if you zoomed in, you could see it on the side there. If you saw, um, you could see individual quads. However, if we look at the NVIDIA slides, there are no LODs in NVIDIA. Um, as you can see, uh, each individual quad is rendered individually, meaning that there is no detail lost. Even when you zoom in to the image, um, it is still pixel accurate to what um, the actual geometry is. So yeah, we need LODs. Um, they are a key requirement. So how do we solve this? We need subpixel pixel LODs. Um, pretty much. So that is the pixel, the LODs are less than a pixel in size. Thus, you can't actually notice any difference between LODs and pure geometry. Um, that is perfect. Uh, so this is very similar to Unreal Engine Nanite. I'm not sure how many people know a rough internal working of Nanite, so we'll get into that. But yeah, so sub-pixel LODs are damn, very damn good and are the solution because LODs basically equal log N scaling with geometry, with respect to render distance and geometry. So Nanite, with, like I am not going to explain the entire Nanite pipeline. It is a very complicated beast um, made by a company with a lot more money than I have, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, what Nanite does is it also does a two-pass um, occlusion culling. Um, so, it does what's called a high Z um, culling, uh, meaning that it basically takes the, uh, it renders geometry that was visible from the previous frame. It generates a high Z buffer from the depth buffer, which is basically create half the image size and take the minimum depth of the two by two pixels that you are sampling from. That is a high Z buffer. What that does is it allows you to do basically, um, you can sample a um, point on the, the high Z buffer and test if that point is visible no matter the size of your bound AABB bounding box. So it also has sublinear scaling, sub or also known as subpixel scaling. What that actually means is that a subpixel is basically the you can't tell the difference between if you were rendering um, geometry like directly, so in like ten thousand quads or a single pixel you wouldn't be able to tell the difference basically because, well, your monitor only has a certain amount of resolution. So it Nanite also does deferred material rendering. So that means is that it doesn't have a uh, fragment shader. It does the fragment shader in the deferred paths, meaning that um, the fragments, the, frag the complexity of the fragment shader is only dependent on its scales with your screen size, not the amount of geometry that you are rendering, which is also really good for performance. Um, they also surprisingly do software rasterization on anything on any triangles that are less than 32 pixels. Um, they just chuck it in a compute shader and call it a day, and they say it's three times faster than hardware rasterization, which is Pretty damn impressive, if you ask me. Um, so, what about my solution? We need and want subpixel pixel LODs. That, that is a critical requirement. Um, to make it look perfect to pure rendered geometry, and also because LODs means that we have logarithmic scaling, so um, we can get infinite render distance. So. It is indistinguishable from yeah, pure geometry rendering, and um, 
it is a requirement. Why it is a requirement? Well, here we go. So, to determine the point such that we can merge a block into a less than, merge two blocks into less than a pixel is pretty simple. Um, yeah, it is a linear equation, kind of. <laughs> it's kind of a linear equation. It is a linear equation up until you get f of e, which um, exists, yes. Um, it is a linear equation at the very center of your screen. However, on the side of your screen, so when you're at 170 or whatever type of whatever type of FOV you are using, you will notice that the pixels are more squished together on the side of your screen than are in the center. This causes some pain points because um, it's not a linear equation. However, what I've done is I've just assumed that it's all linear and call it a day. So to compute, so for a, as you can see, for a, seven, a 70 FOV at 440p, amount, the distance that is required for a block and a, a block to be less than a pixel is 54 chunks render distance, or at 4K, it's 81 ch chunks render distance. What this also means is that at 200, uh, at 108 chunks render distance, we can merge two blocks into a single pixel. That is very critical because that that merge blocks becomes a single data point, which is an LOD. However, since it's already less than a pixel, you cannot actually distinguish it from geom uh, from pure rendered geometry. So, um, what that means is that each time you go out a distance, the amount of dis uh, each time that you merge two blocks, the amount of distance that you can traverse before needing to merge two more um, blocks doubles, uh, which means that that results in your logarithmic, um, your log n scaling, uh, because it becomes two to the n off the top of my head, like uh, render distance scaling. Uh, with the number of uh, distance, which is really good because that means that we can do infinite distance, render distance. So before I go on, let's talk about what some previous techniques are. So the way that previous voxelization or like voxel rendering is, we can assume that at these render distance, we can assume that Minecraft is basically a voxel game, even though up close it is not. Um, as you can see, like especially with mods like um, like the cleaved blocks from Yitter and other things, um, they are not voxels. <laughs> um, they have angles and other shapes. However, at extreme render distances such as 500 or whatever render distance you want, um, you these blocks become less than a pixel. And so you cannot distinguish them between a triangle, square, circle, whatever you want. It all just becomes one. So what are the previous render techniques? The previous rendering techniques use um, either a VA, like um, a sparse voxel octree, a normal octree, a brick map, or some other dynamic acceleration or static acceleration structure. These are very good in changing changing scenes where geometry is changing, et cetera, et cetera, because they can be created on the fly. There is a different technique though that is pretty common about among like static scenes. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it's called um, ray marching or S uh, using SDF, which stands for sign distance fields, ray marching. Uh, so I've got some examples of how SDF works in 2D. And so as you can see, it takes a, sam uh, you start your ray, you sample the biggest circle available until you hit some geometry, and then you just step to that 
um, point, rinse and repeat up until you can up until you hit something that is less than some epsilon distance. Uh, you can see in both of these examples roughly how they work and how they are dynamic. This um, this is not good enough. This is the fastest way you can um, render something, kind of. This is not good enough. Uh, well, not good enough for me. So, what I am doing, I am, I created my own system called UAD, which stands for Unsigned Access Distance. It is very similar to ray marching. Uh, ray marching SDF. It's very similar to SDF. However, it is got three dimensions instead of just you know a circle and so what it is is it's an aabb around um around a point it is a lot faster to traverse through a voxel world uh up to two to four times sdf ray tracing if not more in my experience um implementing lod's is really trivial with it um like as I'll explain in a bit, it's really trivial to implement L um, LODs because you can just halve your um, render distance. Uh, you can just halve your ray distance and switch to another ring. Uh, the cons of it, it's much more expensive to build than compared to a normal uh, SDF or other solution. Um, SDF using it like a different um, distance metric. It is because you are doing three times the amount of work. However, it definitely pays off given the amount of speed. So how is how is UAD implemented? So as you can see, these are some examples of, uh, you know, some UADs. So the black square in the center is our point that we want to compute a UAD for. Um, and then what it does in each axis, so this is a two-dimensional image for demonstration purposes. It works the same in 3D, except with another axis. But it will expand in these two axis axes until it hits a blocking point. Um, at which point, um, yeah, that's that's the size of that axis. And so, yeah, so it means that when you cast an array through it, you can accelerate straight through a lot more geometry than you can if this was, you know, you could only be bounded by a square or something. It is a lot faster than, um, yeah, your other metrics, in my testing at least. So how do we combine this all together into uh, an infinite ray traced acceleration engine system rendering do hickam a bob <laughs> so the way that i have implemented it is with rings each ring contains a contains an uh, 12 areas areas are 128 by 128 uh t u ints pretty much they are they are u ints um and they either point to a sub structure so a BLAS or bottom level acceleration structure or they represent a UAD acceleration point so these areas and sections are independent um, with respect to the UAD meaning so the TLAS and BLAS don't really have much of anything to do with each other other than the fact that the TLAS can point to a BLAS, um, and BLAS is a bottom level acceleration structure, so that means it also only stores air or a block and block color. So areas can only store UAD yeah, or uh, pointed to a BLAS. That's each point into this. So these rings, when you're tracing you, tra you trace from the, let's say, the blue to the orange. And then the way that the, so with respect to the LODs, because remember, we assume that 64 chunks render distance is a is when we can halve the amount of size, basically. 
So we trace through um, our rings. Each color, each different colored ring represents the same amount of area. So it is a it is 128 by 128. But you can see in the unscaled version or or the scaled version, um, as you go out, each ring represents more and more geometry, even though the area size is the same. So this purple and blue, for example, store the exact same amount of data. It's just that the purple is in practice four times the distance away compared to the blue or orange. Um, and that means that each time you double your distance, uh, you're only using uh, half the amount of memory as you were before. Like, you only add half the amount of memory as before. It is quite literally uh, 2 to the power of n render distance with, um, yeah, with respect to distance. So, with all of my very bad speech kind of out of the way, how does this work in practice? Well, I have a very bad demo. This is extremely bad, extremely dodgy. Um, it doesn't represent the full extent of this. But um, yeah, as you can see by the little title below it, this is running at 4K at 1,300 FPS, uh, rendering 30 million blocks uh, away. That is quite far for those who don't know. Um, 30 million blocks is the um, basically the distance to the edge of the world. The Minecraft world is... Uh, no, it's not a real Minecraft world, sadly. Uh, no, I don't didn't have time to finish this presentation as much as I wanted to. I would have loved to have a demo, but other shit has come up. Um, but yes... So each each different color that you can see in here um, is a different pixel, pretty much. Uh, I have actually zoomed in a lot on this image. So this image was originally meant to be taken from zero, zero. I am actually 64 chunks out. This was running at like uh, 3000 FPS when I was rendering it at zero, zero. Um, it's just because I'm so close up um, at the moment that it's rendering a lot slower. Um, but yes, this is very cool and it shows the promise of this technology. Um, yeah, it, it shows that it is possible to render Minecraft at an infinite render distance um, on a pretty much any type of hardware. Um, give it so the, this. GPU that I was using was a 3080 Ti. However, I don't think people will be running 4K 3, uh, 1300 FPS Minecraft. Um, you could easily do, um, you know, a, a 60 FPS 144p um, pretty on, I'm not entirely sure, or whatever. 144p, 1440p, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it shows the possibility of this technology um, and how we can use re rendering to do um, whatever we want, pretty much. The line in the middle is actually just two, is actually just a wall being looked at straight on for those who are asking. Um, but yeah, the very center, I, you can't really see it, but in the very center, that is yeah, 30 million blocks out. And it is not taking that much up that up that much storage on my GPU because of the way that um, the UAD system works. It's a lot more performant than I thought it would be, to be perfectly honest. So yeah, that is my solution for solving infinite render distance. As you Unfortunately, I don't have a full demo. I would have loved to have a full demo. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have time and I got distracted on maybe another project. Um, just a little bit. Um, yeah, so 
Hardware ray tracing. I, it, it is a talk about infinite render distance and ray tracing. We can't forget about the ray tracing, but um, it's the spicy stuff. It's the stuff that um, everyone wants because it basically beats Bedrock Edition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the only difference that between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition is pretty much that they have, you know, the funky DLSS and um, ray tracing stuff. Um, so we want to do that as well. It is very hard um, because of um, uh, because it's you know written in OpenGL Java Edition. Yippee! Uh, it's hard. It's not the most fun thing to do. Um, ray tracing still requires O n squared memory. However, it is still um, fundamentally ray tracing is logarithmic in scaling compared with respect to geometry. Um, research will need to be done on using LODs with ray tracing. I have not looked into that to be honest, I've been more focused on get, laying the foundations of ray tracing in Java Edition. Oh, Boop. there we go. So for those who know, these bottom two images were done last year in November um, using hardware ray tracing. So these bottom images were running very well. Um, this was a terrible system. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, it ha had CPU stalls, GPU stalls, memory crashes. It literally only ran on my machine. I'm pretty sure it caused uh, other people's machines to just straight up crash. So, unfortunately, so I have spent the last very, like, past few months rewriting this entire system into its own mod which I am hoping to actually release really, relatively soon, um, hopefully in the next month or less, which is what um, which is what this top image is representing. It is representing the current state of the uh, development of this mod called Vulcanite. Um, it's on my GitHub if you want to go and see it. It does work. However, you will need to write your own ray tracing shader for it, uh, there are not any instructions yet. Uh, in fact, the readme says hashtag does not work yet. Um, because, uh, well, it doesn't work. However, it will enable shaders written in Iris to use hardware accelerated ray tracing. Um, so, for example, you know all of the path tracing shaders that make your... Um, FPS go to absolute garbage. Well, this can run um, those absolute, this should, if done correctly, mean that those absolute garbage FPS um, shaders can run at, I don't know, 60 to 120 FPS at over 32 render distance. In my testing, I, I'm actually not entirely sure why bug rock or bedrock, whatever you want to call it, um, only supports ray tracing up to 30, um, 24 render distance because it is v like hot, the, the um, ray tracing hardware is very clearly capable of doing so much more. Um, last year, I w when I was testing the system, I was able to get, um, I'm not really sure how much r render distance, but it was um, insane of render distance using pure ray tracing at 32 samples per pixel and it was still outperforming bedrock edition um it's it's insane what this technology has to offer and i'm really happy i can work on it and it is possible to add ray tracing to minecraft and who knows in the what in the future so we could potentially even add um dlss everything and anything that we want um to Minecraft in the future. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, I don't have much else to talk about except what's next. So what next? I would love 
to try and continue to develop these things. Um, like Nvidia, so trying Nvidia is still very early stages. Um, it doesn't even do half of the things that it should be doing to um, improve performance. Um, for example, I was doing some statistics uh, actually earlier today on a laptop. Uh, it was only rendering um, 40 million quads, which is not a lot. Um, it, it is a lot, but it's um, we can do so much better with something called meshlet culling. So a meshlet is a um, is a mesh of thirty two triangles, and um, we can use those high Z buffers that I was talking about earlier to cull them and do inlined instancing on three D resource packs. What three D ref what three D resource pack instancing inlined instancing means is that earlier I was talking about how these three D resource packs uh, just explode geometry. Um, like you can't even do 32 render distance without your VRAM and your entire other system RAM filling up. With inlined instancing, um, you can probably do 3D resource packs up to whatever render distance you want at any resolution. So um, that means that what we want pretty much is nanite bit for Minecraft blocks because I think that would just look so cool. Uh, that's my end goal, is to basically make Nanite for Minecraft along with infinite render distance. I think that will be really cool. Get ray tracing all done. But what is next? Um, I want to finish up integrating uh, Vulkan into the Iris pipeline is my goal. Um, adding some new stuff to the Iris pipeline is something that I really would like to do. Give shader developers access to more stuff so that they can do more cool things like they already do. I don't know if you've seen some of the shaders, but shaders like Kronos um, are, are more photorealistic than Blender. Um, it is quite insane what they do. They are not real-time shaders, but they are written in fucking Minecraft with F in an Optifine format. Like, I don't think people understand how terribly designed the Optifine shader format is. But yes... What is next? Who knows? Uh, rendering is evolving all the time, and um, uh, who knows what's next? Um, it will be really interesting to see, and I will be really happy to. I'll be. I'm happy to help contribute to the next generation of rendering. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Uh, any questions or anything? Um, uh, yeah, I sent it in the uh, question thing. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how... The ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so... Well, was this all implemented in the NVIDIA pipeline or separate mod or something else? So, it depends on exactly what you're talking about. The UAD acceleration structure was originally... In the pipeline, yes, but um, as I was developing, I was like, no, I don't want to launch Minecraft every two seconds. Um, and so I, it, it's currently just in like a micro application because it, the UAD application is just pure shaders. Um, it is basically just a single sh um, OpenGL shader file and that's it. Um, the Vulkan stuff is completely separate. Um, that mod that is compatible with AMD and hopefully all other things that support ray tracing. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't tested it on any of these systems because I only have an NVIDIA GPU. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> but yes. Um, is there any hope for of those of us on older NVIDIA cars and AMD for to achieve these insane render distances. With NVIDIA, no. However, the UAD acceleration system is pure OpenGL uh, 4. 4.3 or something. Uh, it just requires uh, SSBOs. So, um, yes, it should work on like iGPUs and other things, hopefully. I 
as I said, I'm still develop I'm still researching and developing this technology. Um, it will require still a lot of work. However, I do hope to eventually get there, and I do believe that it is possible to do insane rendering on very sub-powered systems. Um, approximately how much will decrease CPU and RAM usage? Um, not entirely sure what you mean by this, but uh, doing a GPU ex uh, GPU um, driven pipeline means that the CPU uh, is basically free to do whatever it wants. Um, it so for example, Nvidia um, can stabilize your frame times quite a bit because it doesn't have to write out a command buffer per frame um, for every chunk that it's rendering three times. It's a bit finicky and complicated, but yes, it will decrease the amount of RAM. Maybe it depends on implementation specific details that I'm not entirely sure of. Um, okay. Yes, it should TM at the moment. No, uh, at the moment, no, because Volk uh, Vulcan Interop is, uh, for some reason, OS specific. Yippee! Um, that means that I need to write a um, memory allocator implementation for um, uh, Linux, pretty much. Um, but other than that, yes, it should just work on Linux. Will this work on non-RTX cards? I'm assuming this is talking about the ray tracing. I am not sure. Uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly what um, it's what 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 cards support ray tracing using the um, Vulkan acceleration um, extensions. So I'm not doing anything custom with the uh, Vulkan ray tracing. So. Um, whatever, like whatever support the driver gives you, that's what you get. I'm not going to be emulating um, ray tracing for the hardware accelerated ray tracing system. Um, yeah. How does uh, ray tracing demos? Um, it's a rewrite, pretty much. Um, the old Iris ray tracing demos, which I wrote. Um, were complete and utter garbage like absolute you if, if someone was trying to use that in production that is a god-awful idea um no it it the um the old iris ray tracing demos are were terrible they had cp and gpu stalls all over the place because that was the first time i had used vulcan i didn't know how to do anything pretty much um and so yeah they were absolutely terrible um it had memory leaks everywhere uh would crash so why the how is it different um it's faster it almost so the new vulcanite system has the foundation support for entities as well which is a uh, very critical but insanely hard to do in java edition due to the way that um due to the way that entities are done in java edition if you ever wonder why your fps uh goes to zero whenever you look at like a single chest uh entities are to blame um it's terrible it's absolutely terrible um the way that entities are and tile entities are rendered in minecraft um but yes so it's a lot better. It's a complete rewrite. It's multi-threaded. The new Vulcanite render system is all multi-threaded. Um, yeah. Um, I recall you saying that one of the view distance extenders had a secondary requirement to function like an app of search. Second thing, and what does in I'm not entirely sure what you mean by this. I was referring to NVIDIA, I think is what I was. 
Um, NVIDIUM has the requirement of having a new uh, NVIDIA GPU. So it needs, so it uses something called mesh shaders, which is only in OpenGL, which is uh, an NVIDIA OpenGL extension that requires the Turing architecture or newer, which for those in numbers is the 1600 series or newer. Um, so if you don't have a NVIDIA, it's a new NVIDIA, it's not going to work as is. Uh, NVIDIA? No. No, that, that is why I called it NVIDIA, because I wanted to tinker with these um, with these new technologies that I had never seen used before in any other game. So uh, Nanite also uses the concept of meshlets. However, um, and they do support mesh shaders, um, actually, now. There's an option for you to use mesh shaders. However, um, I'm not using them in the full way that you can yet. So I expect like I could increase performance maybe by 20 to 30% on NVIDIA more things, if not more. Um, I just haven't had time to tinker around with everything yet. Oh, that's a big text. Uh, is this assuming that all blocks are voxel shapes incorrect? For example, if I had a horizontal plane of leaf block screen, yep. Uh, on a horizontal plane of diamond blocks, blue represents the leaves as fully opaque. Yes, actually, this is absolutely correct. Um, you cannot. So one thing that I wanted to add to the presentation, but once again, no time, um, was how to do LODs on voxel geometry. So the current plan that I have is to take into account uh, the transparency of the object or the amount of area that an object covers per uh, axis um, and then make it a probability field of whether a ray passes through that block or not. And that would give the effect of being some stuff being transparent and some stuff not. Um, and it would mean that, yes, leaves, even at extremes, render distance, you might be able to see through. Uh, same with scaffolding, actually. Um, if you say uh, scaffolding, I wouldn't recommend because scaffolding has 34 quads um, per block, which is just an insane amount of geometry for a vanilla block. Um, but yes, if you cover like a the at Y300 or something and look down, even if you fly way up, you can still see through it. So yes, that is something that I did want to emulate. Uh, what has the 34 quads per block? No, um, uh, scaffolding. It's, it's, it's actually insane. Yeah, no, uh, scaffolding is very intensive. It's kind of dumb. Can you use ray tracing to figure out what's 9 plus 10? Probably. How will mod compatibilities with Vulcanite also, global initiative. <laughs> um, so, mod compatibility should be near 100%. Um, so, at the moment, it's the same as uh, NVIDIA, where it just mixes into the sodium chunk builder and extracts the geometry from that directly. Um, so, yes, I don't see any incompatibilities directly. As for global illumination, when, that would be up to shaders and shader people to implement. I am not a graphics person. And for, ironically, I don't know how to do sh um, pretty shaders. Um, I really struggle with making stuff look nice. I can make stuff run fast, but not look good. Um, as for global illumination, I would like to try and provide as much support as I can for stuff, for shader packs and shader people to implement stuff like Lumen, um, which I think would be really cool, and or and or other really dumb things like DLSS 3.5 and other really weird things that no one ever thought would be possible in Minecraft. Can you explain the uh, rainbow image at 
30 minutes. So this one. Uh, this rainbow image, I'm assuming, or do you mean the other rainbow image on the last slide? Uh, so this one, each single different color, I know it's terrible because this is also a uh, JPEG image. Um, so it looks like absolute garbage. Uh, each different qual each different color that you can see um, represents an individual block. Um so you can't actually see, but around here, um, you, uh, if you zoom in really close onto the, yes, there are three vertical walls of blocks. Um, if you zoom in really close over here, you can actually see where the merge point is because I am zoomed in on the image. Um, like I walked closer to it. Um, so normally you wouldn't be able to see it. It just looks like a bunch of noise because everything is meant to be sub pixel. So it looks absolutely terrible in person, but it's doing it everything correctly, um, which was the test of everything. In, com in order of comparisons, how much faster is the actual extreme distance renderer system from vanilla or beat <laughs> beetroot edition? Um, so, I'm assuming this is talking about the difference between Nvidium and vanilla. Is that correct? Um, so the difference between um, Nvidium is that it is all GPU driven. It to render a world, no matter what size. Um, so let's say. So I actually. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running NVIDIA in this pack. However, there are known issues with newer drivers that cause it to break when you enter the cyberpunk area. Anyway, um, yeah, I I can render... Uh, so in the world where... Um, hang on, let me see. Is it going to load? There we go. So, um, in this world, this is rendering, and uh, I'm not even sure, this was rendering like 12 gigabytes of terrain geometry per second, per frame or something. Um, it was dumb. It was only around 50 OpenGL render calls. It was like not, so, so it was all GPU driven, meaning that the amount of render calls is the same no matter how much you're rendering, which is not true for other any other mod, really. Um, it, yeah, so GPU driven like rendering means that you make the GPU do all of its own work. Uh, it generates its own um, work pretty much. So no matter how much um, you are rendering, it is all the same amount of draw calls. For the ray tracing, what GPU did you test on and what would you expect the lower end ray tracing GPUs? I do not know. Um, I have a 3080 Ti and a 3070 Ti laptop. That is all my testing equipment I have. I haven't even tested it on the 3070 Ti laptop. Well, I have, but um, like it runs fine. I don't have any low-end GPUs to test with, sadly. Um, as cool as that would be, I don't have um, money, really, to get a spare GPU to test performance with, as much as I would actually like to, but um, I, I can't... Um, as much as I would like to try and test and optimize for these lower-end GPUs, the best I can do is... Um, just open MSI Afterburner and do 20% power. Okay, serious question this time. How well is this expected to work for different versions 
Uh, Forge, I don't care about because I use um. So, uh, Vulcanite. I'm assuming you're talk. This is talking about Vulcanite. The um Vulcanite is use uh use it with sodium and iris specifically as hard requirements. If if a mod um such as um, Rubidium and Oculus, or I think it's Oculus, I'm not really sure, wants to um, do it, I'm sure they, like, it's just three mixins. It, it, uh, the amount of mixins that um, Vulcanite has is around five or six. It's, like, potato amount of mixins. Um, you can probably port it to, like, Rubidium and stuff in all of... 10 minutes to 30, 10 to 30 minutes. But that is not something I support because I am only supporting Iris and Sodium directly. Same with Nvidium, actually. Someone posted a patch for an older Nvidium version to work with Rubidium. Um, and it was like a three kilobyte patch. Would this thing work on a Raspberry Pi 4? Probably. I'm not sure exactly on what specs the Raspberry Pi 4 has in terms of OpenGL support. However, you could probably, if you want to do software rendering, you sure as hell could. Um, but yes, I'm if if the CPU slash iGPU of um, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 supports it, then you could probably use it, yes. Will AMD ray tracing or whatever exactly AMD calls it be compatible with Minecraft with the rendering once that mod comes? Um, AMD ray tracing is the same on. So w the way that ray tracing works is it's done via Vulkan extensions. That the Vulkan extensions being um, that define how um, ray tracing works pretty much. Um, as long as your GPU supports these extensions, it will. Hopefully, assuming there are no driver bugs, which is absolutely a lie, um, it will work, uh, ideally. So, yes, it should just work, especially this the newer Vulcanite version compared to the old um, Iris ray tracing demo. Yeah, um, it should just work, TM. Um. It looks like that is all of the questions. Um, does anyone have any other comments, questions, suggestions, anything else they would like to ask? Um, I am happy to answer anything, but yeah. Thank you very much for everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Okay, thank you.